All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to the Division Den Podcast. Today, we got a very special guest. I actually never met him before. It's my first time meeting him, but super dope guy. Film director, screenwriter, producer, actor, singer, reality TV star, pretty much all the above. He's probably a clown and a fucking, uh, I don't know, military jet pilot, too. Uh, we got Bryce Hirschberg. What up, bro? What's up, Alex? <laughs> welcome. Welcome, bro. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Next div. Of course. You know what's funny? I hit up Bryce off a cold text. I found his number. First time. Hit him up. And he was like, yep, let's do a podcast. That's easy. I mean, like, I actually appreciated it. I got this text. I'm like, all right, 310, sweet. Who, do I, who did I meet at this party and forgot right. about? Not a serial killer. Not a serial killer. I'm <laughs> like, all right. And then I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. But I literally Bet. wrote on the bottom. I was like, to be transparent, like, I got your number from a software that I pay a lot of money for. <laughs> hey, hey, worth it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Like, <laughs> worth it. Yeah, I make shit happen. So. I do not fly planes. <clears throat> you don't. Are you a clown? Uh, in just my daily life, <laughs> just in my daily life, but not an actual paid to be clown. You're just not on like, reality TV. I you're guess. not. Okay, yeah, you were a clown on that show. Yeah, yeah, but for we'll, sure. We'll get into that. <laughs> so we got Bryce Hirschberg in the fucking building, bro. You do a lot of stuff, man. And I, I do. I want to get into it, but I, before we get into all the work, business shit, I'd love to hear about. We don't have to talk about it too much, but where are you from? Like, what? How? Where were you born? Like, tell me like your background real quick. Yeah, man. Um, Southern California, born and raised. Like the most proud, the most proud Southern California kid. Uh, born in La Jolla, San Diego. Really? Uh, raised in Orange County. Went to school, in, went to college in Loyola Marymount University. It's like in Marina Del Rey area. Haven't left Marina ever since. And for the last eight years, I've been on my boat. True story. I actually have been on my boat. So yeah, just love it. Obviously, yeah, LA, <laughs> rep, rep, Lakers, Dodgers. <laughs> rep, rep. <laughs> so you're living on a boat? Yes, sir. Is Do you own the boat? My parents, my, well, my okay. parents, my, so the way the, the boat story works is actually kind of a neat story. <laughs> I was living in a, um, two, this is, this will age me. So <laughs> I was living in, take this out, you'll, you'll think this is hilarious, especially if you live in LA. I was living in a two bedroom, one bath in 2013, well, 2012, 2013 with a roommate. Yeah. <clears throat> we paid, we paid $1,600 for the two bedroom, one bath. It's it was good. in Westchester, like yeah, right yeah. next to the airport. Right. I mean, you that same unit now is probably like thirty six hundred. Yeah. But this was like, all right, cool. But still, then it's still expensive. So I'm like, listen, I'm gonna live by myself. My dad and mom were sending me um, Craigslist ads of, of places I could live, and my dad sent me the yeah, you, you could live on a boat. I'm like, oh, I'd do that. Like it's like six hundred bucks a month. I'm like, I would do yeah. that for sure. My best friends all live in Marina. Yeah. And my dad's like, well, let's go look into buying like a boat that you could live on or whatever. So we did. We found this boat in Salt Lake City. Yeah, Utah freshwater, oddly enough, freshwater boat, and um, and we bought it really cheap, like less than a car. Got really? it, got it towed out here. It hit the ten freeway overpass on the way in, totaled the boat. Shut the I fuck. had moved out of my lease, so I'm living in a like basically a, a U-Haul. Has all my what? shit. I'm in the parking lot waiting in this load-in dock. Mm -hmm. And this boat comes, it's crunched, the top is off. But it still <laughs> floated. <laughs> so we put it in the water, and I lived on like a broken boat for like three months, and then they totaled it. Yeah. And mm. with the, we used that money to buy the boat that I live on now. Got it. So that's that's essentially how I live on this boat. So you had boat insurance. We had boat insurance. Okay, we had, well, we had right. boat insurance, we had uh, the tow insurance, and that mm. was the, the big money. So we did that, <clears throat> and then yeah, my brother moved on with me a year later, and so yeah. he's been on... Actually, as a matter of fact, well, it's almost what is it? It's the uh, what date? May, it's the May something. May something. I just had my birthday on Monday. No shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Happy birthday, thanks, brother. What did you do? Did you do anything fun? Went to Six Flags. Hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. I brought the child it out. But yeah, it's uh, almost yeah. my eight year anniversary. Is that math right? Yeah, eight year anniversary on June first. So coming up wow. on it. Yeah. What's What's like the your favorite thing about living on your boat, and what's like the fucking worst thing? They're easy. They're easy answers. Okay. <clears throat> I'll start with the the favorite thing. I could I'll, I could say everything because it pretty much is everything. It's the coolest thing in the world to live on the boat. Yeah. Um, everyone always wants to come hang out with you because it's like <laughs> it's just the coolest place to hang out. Because and you could just you could drink no matter what time of day it is. I'm do, you not gonna, a, do you need a license to drink on your boat? No, nothing. Mm -mm. Okay. You're cool. good. You're good. Um, but you're, you, everyone just comes over and hangs and kicks it, and you're like outdoors all the time. You wake up on the water. That's the best part. Wow. The worst part is the, are the bathroom situation. Right. They're just very small. They're like mm, airplane correct. bathrooms, you know what I mean? But you have a shower. I got a boat. shower on my boat. Two, be two 
bathroom on my boat. It's not a small boat. It's a pretty big boat. It's, it's not. It's not a yacht, but it's not a. It's like not a, a it's mega not a, yacht, but it's a small yacht. You call it like that. Wow. It's nice. People go on to be like, oh shit, I, I, you know, bigger than I thought. Wow. I get that a lot. Uh, <laughs> in all situations, in all, price. But no, the. Uh, <laughs> They, um, I sell myself. I threw myself a lob and then I dunked it. That was, that was pretty nice. <laughs> that was good. But um, I Kobe did. Now the uh, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Oh, oh you're a Lakers fan, so they, that must have hurt they, you. Oh my god, we could get into that. But yeah, um, sure. but yeah, bathrooms. And when you flush the toilet on the bathroom, it kind of stinks up the butt for like 20 seconds, which is always like a. Mm. And we just have. I, we are also right next to the bathrooms where my boat is, so everyone just we just give them the keys and they go to the bathroom off the boat. It's a piece it. of cake. Do you like when people shit on your boat? Or let me rephrase that. Do you not like when was, people shit on your boat? I was going to say, this. I don't have a weird <laughs> fetish about it. No, no, no. But um, you're not allowed. We have a no number two policy. Ah. Yeah. So you got to, what's like, the, is there in your bath? Okay. Literally 20 feet away, bathroom's okay, okay. right there. Got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there other people living on boats next to your boat? A couple. So you have neighbors? I do, but not next door neighbors. And they're all kind of like old. You know what I mean? Mm. Like 50s plus. Um, and it's right next to the yacht club. So like I'll have parties on the dock and like all the yacht club people will like look over us and just like yeah. give us bottles of like wine and stuff. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> it's all these good looking girls and yeah, good looking yeah. guys. And everyone's just chilling. And these people are all like in their forties, fifties, sixties. They're like loving life. That's watching us. Fire. <laughs> I bet when you have girls come over, it's like the most, like for them, it's probably like, holy shit. Yeah. And no, it's not, it's not a bad, it's not a bad flex. Yeah. You know, back in the bars days, remember back in the days when bars were open? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it used to be, it used to be like, hey, you know, it was a lot different than being like, hey, come back to my place. You come back to my place, you're like, who's this guy? Yeah. It's kind of weird. Like, do I go back? I just met him. But it's like, hey, come back to my boat. It's like, fuck yeah. Can I bring a friend? And it's like, yeah. yes, you can. <laughs> but do you, do you tell them, like, let's say you're going on a date with a girl for the first time. Do you tell them, like, this is where you live? Or do you just say, oh, this is my boat? No, I say it's where I live. I uh -huh. own it. I so own you own it because you've been doing it for Yeah, I've been doing it for years. so long. And it's, you know, it's like, it's I'm not going to hide it. You know, it's just like, it is what it is, you know. But if I'm, like, dating a girl for a, a good amount of time. I get my fair share of sleeping off campus too, so it's nice. Right, you know, I get, get the to... I get the real shower, the real bathroom, the real, <laughs> you know, the king size bed or whatever instead of my queen or whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's good, you know. That's amazing, bro. Right. You're like, the first person I'm sure you get that. Like, you're the first person that I've ever met that actually lives on a boat. I, I mean, I was incredible. the first person I had ever met too. So, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. It's a bro. different thing, different lifestyle for sure. I love that. So okay, so you were at La Loyola Marymount. Yep. And then you got into directing, right? Like yeah, film, film school there. Okay. Made a short film called Counterfeit. Well, I made a few short films, but one of my four short films, Counterfeiters, it won. They have the, they have their own Oscars there. They call it the Film Outside the Frame Awards. Yeah, <laughs> it won Best Picture there. Yeah, uh, I think I, I want to say it was the first undergrad to win Best Picture or one of them. Or so it was a big accomplishment. So I took yeah. that movie and it got into the Cannes Film Festival in the short division. Wow. Like so that was big. And then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna write a feature, but that was like in 2014. Yeah. Two two years later, nothing happened. I'm doing like odd jobs, um, trying to freelance film this and edit that, and I'm kind of just like scraping by. And thank God I had the boat because the boat is so inexpensive that I can kind of afford to be like the struggling right. artist. Right. And then I finally saved up enough money to make my own feature film, which is I just I basically had developed counterfeiters to shorten into a feature, and that movie did really well. Seventy-one percent on Rotten Tomato right and now. And you were, uh, what was the lead's name? Bri Bryce Bridger. Bridger. Bridger, okay, Bridger okay. was my. Yeah, I played Pl Bridger in it. Yeah. It was okay. Gotcha. And it that also took place on a boat, right? It did. The yeah. whole movie. Yeah. Well, a lot of the movie. Yeah. A lot and was of that the, your boat? Was that my boat? That's my boat. Yeah. Wow. So if you watch Counterfeiters, available on YouTube right now. I took it off Check of it I, I, Amazon and uh, iTunes and all that stuff because I wanted everyone to watch it for free during the COVID times. And then I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Just keep it on there. My next one will probably be a Netflix original, though. We'll see. Hell yeah. Knock on wood. That's what I'm hoping for. Whoa, that's a hell of a knock. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. As I'm coming good. here. Yeah, I was going to say, a little bit of bass in here. I like that. I'm coming <laughs> here to record. That's crazy. But before you did Counterfeiters, you had a, a, um, a movie called Bear. Bear, right? yeah. The boxing movie, yeah. So that was the first one that you ever made. That was my first like movie I ever made. It was a short. It was shot on 35 millimeter film in film school. It was one of the biggest productions the film school ever had in there, like uh, Soundstage, which is one of the top film schools in the world. But yeah. I'm like, listen, I am paying money to go to the best film. I'm going to fucking do it. So yeah. I had like a 75 person cast and crew. Like built, wow. my dad and I built the boxing, like this, it, was, it takes place in the 30s. We built like a 30s-esque boxing arena. It was, it was based on a true story. It's, that's also on YouTube, I think. But you could watch wow. that. It's a nice little flick. I'm not in that. Yeah. But 
But it's good. I mean, it, you know, watching it back, I'm like, all right, good for me yeah. at 20 years old or whatever. That's insane, bro. So it sounds like in college, your mindset was like, I want to make movies. Hell yeah. But then somehow you ended up on this reality show that everyone probably knows called yeah. Too Hot to Handle. Too Hot to Handle, yeah, man. Which I would love to spend some time on because sure. it's kind of important. Yeah, it is so, very important. <laughs> how did you, okay, bro, how did you go from making movies to being on a Netflix like show? Like, is how, it very, yeah, yeah, sure. This is, um, it's kind of an interesting story. So lo- this is, you know, long story short, because I'm not going to bore you with the whatever details, but I had a girlfriend mm. who was really was great for a, a little bit of time. Uh, gave it for two years um, mm. while I made the movie. <clears throat> Counterfeit. Counterfeiters. And then went to got into theaters. It did a bunch of stuff, this and that. Um, but I was waiting for more. Like I wanted to, to get that big you know, agency signing or that mm. the next big movie or the investor was like sick movie. Let's make another one. Yeah. I'm still riding, but you get a lot of these no's, no, no, no. And no one's believes in you. And still, and even then, listen, my movie's got fresh tomatoes written up in, in variety and Hollywood. Isn't it rotten tomatoes? Yeah. Rotten tomatoes. Yeah. For, well, yeah, it is. It's called, I it's got like fresh tomatoes. So I got the fresh tomatoes on rotten tomatoes. It's called, I got, f- got it, 71% got fresh tomato on <laughs> rotten tomatoes, but no, it's good. Good reviews though. That's good. And I'm like, but I don't know what's what's happening. I don't, I'm not getting the luck. Yeah. Uh, I'm not getting. I'm not. I, people aren't seeing it enough, right? Mm. But I kind of just. I kind of was. I was sad to be honest with you. I was like, I, my whole life, I was just like, I was working to this point. I did it, and I was so happy while doing. It, but then it kind of, I, I had this drop. And during that, my girlfriend at the time broke up with me, and I'm like, I'm just a fucking sad guy. I was just. Yeah. I was. I was not. I was not a happy camper. And it was. It, I I was driving this convertible Mustang. <laughs> and this is a weird thing and I, I not typically a guy who believes in um or I wasn't at the time in like quantum physics or like sure you know what I'm talking about yeah, like yeah. Uh, you know wishful thinking or with you know what I'm talking right, about right, like right. saying it and, and it'll happen or whatever manifesting manifesting that's the word yeah. thank you that's why you run the podcast <laughs> and I just talk here like a fool quantum physics yeah you know that's that's what's yeah quantum phys- the secret you know what I mean you ever see the secret but yeah that's uh that's a uh, manifestation right so I sold my Mustang because yeah. it was falling apart, and I I wanted to drive a nice car, and I was a sad kid. So <laughs> I found the craziest lease deal on that first. We were talking about this earlier. My first Alfa Romeo, and it was mm. like it was a loss leader. It was like the one that was on display. It, they were giving away for like nothing. Two year lease, yeah. and I and I, it would have been as much as me like working on my car. So I'm like, let's do it. So I Fuck got it. it. And I was driving that thing around, and people were like, "This is the sickest car." And I'm, yeah. like, I'm driving it for like nothing. Okay. I'm like, this is so cool. But I felt good about myself. Of course. Like, I'm like, this is so neat. I know it's materialistic, but it's something that made me feel important. Like, it's real shit. It's, it makes me wake up in the morning. I'm like, now when I drive a place, I'm not like kind of like low key embarrassed. So I'm proud to pull up, right? Right. Not two weeks later, I got a DM on Instagram from a casting director saying that I'm casting this television show. It's from the people who made American Idol, this and that. So I know it's Fremantle because I'm in the business. Yeah. Fremantle's a really big uh, production company, like sure. the biggest. They do like fam- everything from like Family Feud to, you know, to so shit, yeah. yeah, big shit, American Idol, the whole thing like that. So, wow. I I responded like immediately. I was actually with a girl at the time in my room, <laughs> and I read this DM aloud. It's like when back when I had like one DM request. I'm yeah. like, what is this one DM request? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, look That's at it. Crazy. Now, like, there's no way in a million years I find it. But <laughs> I, they, I um, I clicked it, and it's like, hey, would you be interested? Yeah. And I just kind of like DM right back. I'm like, sure. Oh, I read it aloud to this girl. She's like, you should totally do it. And I'm like. Really? I'm like, all right, whatever. So I hit it back. I'm like, yeah, I'm interested. This girl woman calls me, Kate, yeah. from England, called me immediately. Kate from England. And uh, and I chatted with her for like five minutes, and she said, she said it's for a major streaming platform, mm. but I can't tell you what it is. Of course. And I said, and I was thinking, all right, you know, I was thinking small. She's like, well, you could guess. I'm like, is it Hulu? You know? She's yeah. like, what's Hulu? Because they don't have Hulu <laughs> in the UK. I'm like, I'm like, oh, is it Netflix? Because they have never had a reality show before. Yeah. And there, and she just kind of like giggles and she goes, would you want to do a Skype like on Thursday? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Fuck, and then yeah. basically did my Skype like two days later. It's like January 2019. And long story short, I'm like, when I, as soon as that got the Netflix, that was an e- uh, email that was a Netflix thing. I, I saw a, the perspective and I'm like, that is a big audience. Huge. So I'm thinking this is going to be my opportunity to get my movie more exposure to yeah. get me myself more exposure to work on future projects and that was the idea of getting onto this show and i again i had no idea what this show was about sure and i had no idea how big it was gonna be either but that's a different story 
So when she when she DM'd you, because I get those DMs all the time. For I'm sure. like, oh, it's probably a scam. Like, sure. I don't, you know, I don't really trust that shit. Did you have like a bunch of nice pictures and shit? Like, were you already advertising yourself? Yeah, yeah, you were, yeah. Okay. I had a small following on Instagram, like maybe ten, eleven thousand. But okay. we also have my brother and I have something called Boat Chronicles on Instagram, <laughs> which is just our big boat parties. Yeah, so, yeah. So and okay. I would and I would cross promote that, and so uh, I think they liked that. Very cool. Um, they so, saw it because you're very unique in that sense. Like, right. No one does that. Exactly. Shit. And I think they, in hindsight, they saw me with all the girls and they're like, this guy might be perfect for this show that we're about to do. Right. Because they're like, oh, he's a fuck boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. They're like, oh, yeah. little do they know I'm just a big old sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to say that's. Wow. Okay. So you, okay. So you go through the casting. I'm guessing, or I'm guessing they interviewed you probably like a hundred fucking times. A lot of right? times. A lot of times. Yeah. Okay. Talked so you, to a ton of people. They actually flew out to LA. Really? Um, well, after about a month of the, of waiting on uh, for the Skype results, that you get an email and it was like, "All right, so we have the final. You made the final round." And it's like, "God, I bet you they sent this to ten thousand people, hundred people, right?" Yeah, yeah. So it's like, "All right, but then we're gonna actually contact you. And we're gonna fly you into an area for you for us to interview in, you in person and, and basically make sure you're not a serial killer, you know?" <laughs> and I'm like, "All right." And so I'm like, it's probably I'm like, oh sick, I get to fly somewhere. I'm like, ah, it's probably gonna be LA. Right. And so and being in LA, of course, I'm the only person from LA. You're right here. So I just I drove up the road. It was at the the wasn't what the season I forgot what it's called. The the, court. the Cecil Hotel. No, I, yeah, <laughs> whoa. Then I wouldn't have ever been on the show. No, but it was by the LA it was LAX. It was one of the four points Marriott or something, four points Marriott, okay. whatever it is. Yeah. Um it was a pouring rain that day. It was Valentine's Day on mm. twenty in twenty nineteen. It was Valentine's Day 2019, and I actually left this girl's place in the morning. And I, I'm like, how do I look? I got this big thing, you know? And, of course, I, she knows that I'm auditioning for the show, and she doesn't know. It, now, they never said it was even a dating show. They just said this was just oh. a show in, on a Netflix show. Yeah. I'm like, all right. So she was really supportive <laughs> at the time. Right. Um, that's obviously a different girl than, mm. than, the, than, the, than the person who broke my heart. So, so um, but is this the same girl that you were with when you got the DM? This is, uh, no, probably not. <laughs> but, Fuck boy. But, <laughs> uh, anyways, so um, I, I, she like helped me get ready. She's like, yeah, wear this shirt, that, pick that nice pair of shoes or whatever. Yeah. Pouring rain that day. Of course. It never rains in LA. It never rains. It's like a scene from a movie. It was know? crazy. And I, I'm like, I'm like trudging through like knee high, like just a pool of just water and getting into the thing and I meet it was it was Rowena and Amy they're having producers on yeah. the show and I remember seeing them and I'm like I'm so sorry for the rain like is it, how many have you ever been to LA before <laughs> you know I apologize but it's usually much nicer than this you know? yeah but I I, I I guess I smashed in person and in uh, about a month later like mm. right on St. Patty's Day they're like all right you're gonna do it but you're gonna wow. come on late I said oh really right. I didn't love that idea Mm -hmm. I wanted to be original cast. I can come out episode three is what I did. Yeah, and there was what ten episodes. There's there were eight episodes. Eight. Okay. So I missed the first two. Yeah. And so, um, and I was like the surprise, right? But they the way they said, like, right, would you be okay with that? And at this point, I'm like, well, I can't say no. Yeah. <laughs> because then they're like, well, yeah. then you're not gonna be on it, then, you know. Right. But the way they put it was, Netflix thinks that you're the only person that could could carry their own like entrance. That's how they put it. And I, I I liked that. I liked the pressure yeah. that that was. So I said, yeah, well, fuck that. Let's go. I, I, wow. I'll, I'll kill it for you guys, type thing. And yeah, that was a that was then yeah then that was it was very interesting that that whole process. That's crazy. Okay, so you you go through this rigorous process, you get casted, and mind you, two up you already I mean you're on the show. There's not that many cast members. Fourteen of us in total, and ten yeah. of us it left in the end. Yeah. Crazy. Okay, so you. Now you get flown to an island. Where did you guys film? Yeah, we well, we, we I got the uh, plane ticket the day before I left. It was like April first, my brother's birthday, when I got the plane ticket and I left April second. Yeah, they their first day of filming was April second. Okay, they flew me in, so I'm expecting to get, you know, go in, get picked up by the producers. It was in Puerto Vallarta. Where's that? Uh, yeah. Mexico. Mexico. Oh, it's like gosh. south. It's like a, if, a thirty minute flight south of Cabo. Yeah. Um. So just right two hour, two hour, two and a half hour flight from here, easy money. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like sick, and I've been there before a few times. So I know the airport. I get outside, and they're like, just you know, we're on WhatsApp because that's UK. So everything's on mm -hmm. WhatsApp, and I'm like, all right, I'm here, and they're like, someone's gonna pick you up, and I'm and I'm prepared for the worst because I've he heard reality show horror stories about like they lock you up in a room, they take a take away the key, they take away your phone, and then you they come and get you when they need you so I'm like preparing myself mentally for that <laughs> but they're filming and it's their first season they ever filmed so they're not really ready right so they're just like we don't know when you're coming in keep your phone on you have fun in Mexico 
and an all-inclusive resort. So I just ate and drank for days and days and days. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up being six days before I went on. But the interesting story that not a lot of people know about is when I – so I filmed the day after. I got in on a Monday. I filmed on a Tuesday, like, my intro. Yeah. When they're, like – you know, when it, everyone sees me on the show being, like, hey, I'm Bryce. I <laughs> hook up with a lot of girls, you know. <laughs> Fuck you. Right, <laughs> you know, right, whatever right, right. it is, right? It's just true. Well, so this is what they're, but what they don't know is that, you know, how editing goes. They chop this thing up and they're yes. asking the right questions and stuff like that. And of course, they tell me beforehand that there's, I'm, there, there's no guarantee I'm on it. I got, this is like an audition tape. Mm. So I'm like, fuck. And they're like, you got to be like extra and you got to be this and you got to be that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> but I'm like, all right, I thought I was in. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, this is them manipulating. This is them manipulating yeah. me, right? But not in a bad way, but you know, it is what it is. It's all in the, you know, for entertainment. Yeah, yeah. So so I'm there and they're asking me things and it's all, all like sex related, you know, blah, blah, blah. This and that. I even said it, something really funny where it was like, when's la- they're like, when's the last time you had sex? I'm like, last night in the hotel room. But that was a joke. I just said, just kidding after that. But they, did, they took out the just kidding and they just put it in. I'm like, oh shit. But anyways, I knew that that was a possibility. Um, but so I get back, I, I feel like I smashed it. I feel like it was one of those things originally, this is, no one knows this. This is a, this is a div exclusive. Let's go Check baby. This out. You ready for this? They told me that the cast is going to vote to see if they want to let me in the house what? and they're going to see a bunch of Bryce's and they're going to pick which one or like, but you know, me and you know, Corey or like whoever it is, right. they're going to pick and you what might, you fuck? might not get in. So this was like day two and I'm like, okay. Hold on. But they're just fucking with you. Well, no, check this out. I think that was a real thing. So, because they've never done it. They don't know how they want to do it. Right. But I'm thinking, I'm calling my mom and dad, you know, because I got my phone. I'm like, listen, if I'm on the, if I'm a castmate, I'm, there's no way I'm putting me in, in the house. You know what I mean? (laughs) And then I'm like, but if I'm the producers, this guy's fucking TV gold. After the interview I just gave, I'm like, you got to put me on. Right. If I'm Netflix, you got to put me on because I've, what I, like, what a fool I just made myself. You know what I mean? Like, you got to put me on. So, like Saturday, so like three days later, I, I meet like the head of the, the head Han show at the time. Mm-hmm. He ended up leaving the show later, but I said, I said, hey, so what's the deal? They're like, yeah, we need you on the show. We weren't gonna, we're not gonna do the pick the cast thing, the cast fix Got thing. It. We're just gonna surprise them. Okay. I'm like, sweet. I'm like, all right. So you're going on tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, fucking pump. So they take my suitcase. They give me like three shirts or a shirt, you know, a couple options. Yeah. yeah. They bought me a backpack because I don't have a bag. They bought me a backpack of the mega, and I'm just like, all right, cool, ready to go. They call me like the next day or the that night. And they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna push it. Gotta push it till Mon- Wednesday now. This is like Saturday." Oh I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm just trapped. I'm trapped. There'll be like ten days in this place." So right. I call my dad up. I'm like, "Hey, I got an extra queen bed in here. You want to cruise and just like get drunk with me for like three days and come to Mexico?" My dad's like, "Sure." He did that. Well, he ended up getting like kidney stones. Poor guy. Oh shit. So yeah, he's he he hasn't had in a while. Knock on really loud knock. Boom, loud loud knock on wood. <laughs> but um. But he sent my brother instead. So my brother came okay. in the afternoon, Sunday afternoon. And did, were the producers okay with him? Yeah, they're yeah. like, sweet. He's going to be here for a while. He could ha- he could stay in your room, all inclusive, the whole thing like that. I'm like, cool. Hell yeah. So he shows up, and we're like at the pool, and I get a, a call from one of my producers. He's like, hey, I'm on my way. I'm like, cool. I'll be sure to introduce you to my brother. Cool. So he's here. Nice to meet you, Barrett. That's my brother's name. Sam's like, nice to meet you, Barrett. Yeah. He's like, Bryce, good news. You go on tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like sick, but it's like, all right, Barrett. Thanks for coming for no for nothing. But so we ended up. Bye. I just ended up giving him my wristband, and he lived. Oh, he, he lived there for <laughs> by cool. himself. So yeah, then I basically I the next morning, I went to. Long story short, I went there. I was blindfolded, walked up a staircase into this room, and kept there. I, I, they took the blindfold off. They kept me there for like three <laughs> hours until there was like time to go, and people just, what? just hyping me the whole time. You gotta yeah. come in. Gotta be loud. You gotta be kind of like make a statement you only have one chance to uh, make a first impression netflix picked you for this don't let us down Shit like you, that. Motivating you. Yeah. you know and i'm like sick but i'm like wait a second i envision this scene ever since i found out i was going in late i'm like listen i'm gonna come in nice and cool yeah yeah and find like the prettiest girl there or something ask him to give me a tour of the place like try to hit yeah, it yeah. off like be like not really intrusive no step on anyone's toes like i wanted to be liked going in when you're the new guy of course i did not want to be coming in and be the loud guy but they made but they me. made you do that so i'm like well you came in pretty hot i came in hot and i yeah. uh, in, in any anyone who knows me <laughs> pretty much knows me i would never come in that hot oh last night if i'm very drunk i would totally but we didn't yeah. really drink on the show so do they have any alcohol or at all we had two drinks per night per night okay, okay. as yeah. they allotted so gotcha but anyways yeah that's pretty much the story of wow. getting on and then eventually kells the way it happened they kind of cut it 
differently because it is a TV show. Yeah. But they're Kel started saying, "Yeah, Bryce, like, welcome, but you can't like touch any girls, <laughs> this and that, blah blah." blah. And I'm like. Did this guy already like claiming these guys just fuck with He's me right now. With you. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, okay, all right, okay, fine, Kels. I won't mess with your girl. Which one's yours? You know what I mean? Like, right. and then he's like, no. Then everyone starts like, like tripping. No, he no, no. Wasn't playing. It's like this and that. Like, blah, 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 your money and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my god, everyone, calm down. I'm like, what's the deal? They're like, no, this is this is you're not allowed to kiss, touch, have sex, or masturbate. And if you do, you have to you lose money for the whole place. Right. And I'm like, I'm like for real. I thought it was. I'm like, I my mom's gonna fucking love this show. <laughs> you That's know what I mean? crazy. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was like the that was wow. it, man. So when you okay, so you walk in episode three. Who kind of like catches your eye first? Like out of all people, Frankie was the first person I saw. Frankie and Haley, and I'm like a blonde guy. Yeah. So yeah. then, actually, as a matter of fact, I said, I Haley was the first person who caught my eye, and I mentioned something. But this was right after I had find found out that hey, the, the show. Spoiler alert: yeah. If you haven't seen it, you should fucking watch it. <laughs> but um, Frankie and Haley are hated by the whole cast at this time because they Already kissed and lost three. lost money. Right. So I'm like, I mean, because they asked me like, who who are you interested in right now? I'm like, well, everyone's beautiful, but you know, I'm a blonde guy, and everyone's like, oh, like that, and and I'm like what no is that not good you know and they're like no it's fine whatever and then i find out that it was it was a villain she was like a, being a she villain. Was like a villain. Yeah, but yeah. then chloe was an ex-person as a matter of fact i went to <laughs> give me a lot of tea right now so in the <laughs> middle of the production before they made me look like a fool when i played piano and they gave me a little toy piano, i remember that shit. Yeah, yeah and i'm like they cut it they cut it crickets or whatever it's awful awful cut but whatever fuck but because it. It, you i remember watching an interview you actually like played for a while and I, everyone's having a good time oh yeah i played yeah i yeah. played and we were like having a blast but they of course i'm like oh watch them fuck me on this right so um <laughs> they told me beforehand so they're gonna say you're gonna go down there you're gonna play and you're gonna pick Haley for a date now before this th all the castmates came up to me and the other guys i just met them yeah yeah they're like so we don't talk to Frankie and Haley, and if you do, you like chose the wrong side. Oh shit! And I'm like, okay. So do <laughs> I? Do I like? What the fuck? Yeah, I'm like, do I like just not do it, or like, yeah. what do I do? Because you know they're obviously hot. They're all hot. Stunt. But everyone on the show is fucking yeah, gorgeous, yeah, bro. Yeah, exactly. So I'm thinking. So I. Th Crazy. So the producer comes up to me, Haley. I'm, in my mind, I'm like the equations and how what's gonna how am I gonna look. <laughs> And I'm like, can I do Chloe instead? Yeah. And it ended up being the better choice better, yeah. <laughs> by far. Her accent. Bro. Her a Oh, my God. I was, I was dying, bro. Like She's on the circle. She was. That? She did great. Crazy. Yeah, she, she did, crushed she did, it. Yeah, I didn't she, know she was like 22. Yeah, she's young. She was 20 on the show. I was 28. What the fuck? And so, so much her for her age, Big, bro. big age gap, though, yeah. But so, you're, um, you're 29. You're 30? 30, 30, I'm 31. 31. Just turned 31, okay. yeah. Cool. It's weird because I filmed the show as 28, but now I'm 31 even though the show came out last year. It's a weird math. Yeah, yeah. But um, I was the third oldest on the show. It went like. Jesus, Matt, Jesus guy was probably older. Right? He he was he's like two months. Matthew, yeah, he's my best friend. Oh yeah, yeah, he lives next door to me now. I'm hanging out with him pretty much like he's every on a day. boat too, or is he? No, he lives in an apartment. I actually just moved him in. <laughs> it's like wow. literally on the other side of the marina. We see each other. He was with Six Flags with me for my birthday. Second. And he left uh, early. Right? He left early. Show. Why did he dip? He just felt like he. Yeah, it along. was just one of those things. Just one of those things. The way the the way the cookie crumbled at the time, he just wasn't feeling it and didn't need the process. So Fair. Yeah, I respect it. Respect. But yeah, so in a way, I ended up choosing Chloe. And well, the producers were like, mm, they like leave for like 15 minutes, come back, like, yeah, you can choose Chloe, that's fine. Mm. So they basically reworked that story. I mean, I remember the first night I had no bed to sleep in. Really? They didn't have enough beds for anybody. So uh, you're like, oh, I'll just sleep on the boat. I know what you had, exactly. So I'm like, I'm thinking, I'll just sleep on the floor, it's no problem. Yeah, yeah. You know, they had a little mattress you could put on the floor. But of course, like, Haley and Frankie were sleeping in the bed together this time, and they were like being devious. And they're right. like, Bryce, you can sleep with us. Ooh. And I'm like, you know, then you I get like David give me dirty looks and Ed Kells and Matthew. They're like, you mother, you better Don't fucking. Do I'm it. like, I'll sleep on the floor. <laughs> it's no, okay. Good choice. So I did. I made. I ended up making the right choice in this. But yeah. But it's funny. People got a lot. Like, see, I actually, I think Haley's awesome. I've hung out with everyone since, and Haley's a doll. She's, she's, that, got a, she's not that bad. In she's not that bad. They just portrayed her that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They. She's not that bad. I mean, she's. She's one of those people that is like, if you if you piss her off, she won't like you. She doesn't. She's unapologetic about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But as a matter of fact, I would say about most of these people are pretty egocentric. Like if you, like they are very sure of themselves and proud of themselves, and they of course. they have to like they know what kind of circle they they, they want to have, and if they don't like you, they will they don't. I'm like 
you know, I'm I'm pretty nice, and I'm not saying I'm not saying they're not right. nice, but I have a lot of friends. I'm friends with everyone on the cast. You're like, a, yeah, I got yeah. you, I got you. You're maybe more open, and they're maybe like more closed. Right. I got you. Right. I don't know for whatever reason, maybe it's an American thing. Who knows? Yeah, no, I feel that man, and I think that's a great quality, especially like coming off a show. You you expect reality stars to be like dicks, and like, yeah, sure. But you're probably one of the nicest people I've ever met. I really appreciate that too. Yeah, it's crazy. So okay, cool. So you end up. Fast forward, so the show's yeah. going. Yeah. Um, how was it on your mental, like through that process? Because I know reality TV can be very intrusive. Yeah, there was a we had a we had an on site psychiatrist, like most shows do. Really, I don't know if all shows shows do, but they did for sure. They wanted okay. to maybe you know make sure they had everything, you know, on all on, covered everybody on all basis. But they, yeah. um, I, uh, I was okay. I had some moments, like everybody yeah. would have moments. I had some moments where I was just like, I miss my family, I miss my friends. My dog had just died like no. a week before, of like 16 and a half year dog, and that was very sad. Aww. So that would hit me every once in a while, but I get a little emotional. But um, yeah. plus the the whole the whole thing was it was really a, a, a wellness retreat, right? So we would have workshops where they just broke down us guys. Like, I remember you did the the staring at each other. Or yeah, this yeah we did yeah. This, and this, this heart warrior challenge, which they. They cut it to make it seem pretty light. I, they, I know I talked to some producers. They had different edits of this. Okay. So they had one edit that they're like, we're going to win a fucking Emmy. But then they decided to just go light with it and just make it more instead of like being super dramatic. But I'm talking, the guys were hysterically crying. Really? It was the craziest bonding experience from like the, the six dudes. There were six of us at the time. Yeah. Um, of the guys and we were just like literally we just bonded like crazy for this I bet. so it was and then when you're that you're super vulnerable because you've already released all this stuff so you have <laughs> some times when you're just like i just want to go home but like i remember even though it was it we we called it like the world's nicest prison you know what Dude, i mean yeah because it's like part of absolute paradise but you have no freedom right you know? and it's, they took away your phones they took away yeah, all your shit yeah, yeah. Okay, no so music, so we're just singing it aloud all the time because yeah. we just gotta have some sort of it's crazy. entertainment. So yeah, but the experience was was great in hindsight. But I remember being back there, being like, I can't wait till it's done. Yeah, because number one, I wanted to be able to make it to the end. Of course. And number two, I I wanted to go home. So, of course. but I mean, we ate like kings. I mean, I'm talking <laughs> steak and lobster every night. Fuck yeah! You know, it was like, and we, you know, again, only, only. I'm a bit of a, I'm not a, I'm a bit more of a drinker than everyone else. Sure. So, um, people would just like not finish their drink, so I would just drink the rest. Sure, of pick them yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Well, so, okay, so you get you get back, and then yeah. the show launches in uh, April, a year later, and that's right when COVID hit. So COVID hit like March, March, right? Okay. And we we found out our show was coming out on April seventeenth, like on March seventeenth. Like okay, I'm talking barely. about a month before. Yeah, yeah. They're like, all right, we're gonna release like the first press statement. Netflix one month before released the first press statement of Two Hot Tano officially. We even know the name of the show. Crazy. So this is a two, the Two Hot Tano. We're like, all right. I was thinking for uh, Forbidden Fruit. I like the name Forbidden Fruit better. But Two Hot Tano was a very flattering title Forbidden for the rest of us. That's well, cool. there was also a poisonous tree that was on site yeah. all the time that uh -huh. we weren't allowed to go next to because the free the tr the fruit is poisonous yeah so i'm like forbidden fruit would have been sick you could have made that sense. a total deal if they did like no fuck you bryce we want you out to handle whatever <laughs> so um so uh we're i remember on well okay so it, the press release came out i was pumped we went into lockdown and it was supposed to be locked down until april 19th right but we didn't really know what COVID was. We didn't was. know what COVID was. Yeah, yeah. And I and I remember we were getting on the cast together, and we're like, "This this is shitty. Life is shitty." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, bro, I hope it goes a little longer than April nineteenth because everyone's stuck inside and wants to watch a show. And we're all just being like, mm. see, like quietly being like, "Bro, like this is amazing." Like Tiger King was out, Tiger King was over. And now <laughs> yeah. it's us. Like that's it. The next show. You yeah. Know, the next show. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. So basically, April seventeenth rolled around, and it was the biggest growth. I've ever seen it definitely from uh, maybe ever, but definitely from a reality show. I mean, the main cast, the 10 that started the show, mm -hmm. they all got 300,000 followers in the first weekend. Really? Yeah. And you got verified and, all and verified. Show. I got verified. Yeah. It was funny. I got verified like a day before the rest of the cast did <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was just like, yo, we were on a group chat. I'm like, yo, check it out. And they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, oh, I hope we're, ours is coming. Low right. key. I'm just like, I hope no. <laughs> I hope I'm first, you know yeah no but uh um, but yeah and then 
and I, because I was late, I was late to the growth, but my growth came as well. Eventually. Yeah. Are you, when you say growth, are you saying as a person or as a character? I'm, I'm talking about, uh, th th in this circumstance, I'm talking about social media Social media growth. growth. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Like, because they were, people were getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands, and I was. Like, but they didn't know who you were until. Until later. Three. Right, right, three, right. And then I wasn't a very likable character in the first episode and a half. So it, you have to really watch the whole show to be like, oh, he's actually a cool dude. Not a bad guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, which is good. They gave me like an, a redemption type storyline, which was sure. cool. And I got to be vulnerable, and they showed a lot of it. So, which That's is nice. That's amazing. Yeah. How is how has that show impacted your your business life? Like, have you brand deals? Yeah, well, I mean, it went from. Well, I mean, it's the first time I was able to be a influencer of the sorts, you know what yeah. I mean, or like model or whatever, right? Yeah. So you have all these followers, and eventually, you know, we have site. You just mentioned my pants. We have fashion. Nova wants to be on this thing. You know, <laughs> like, cool. So they'll give you a little bit of cash. You're like, all right, so this is cool. So money starts. Every, flowing money out of starts it. coming, but yeah, unfortunately, yeah. it's COVID. Mm. So traveling and appearances, appearances and all that happening. stuff that we were planning on doing and just being everywhere and getting paid for like hosting, hosting nightclubs in parties. Vegas, yeah. you know what I mean? And we're that just like, we're, it didn't happen. And even these budgets um, were cut and people were, were laid off at like, you know, companies like Fashion Nova where they just had like, we can't even afford to pay you right. really. So we did get very, very famous, but we really, or at least most of us. I know some of us got, some got a real, like a lot of good, you know, I think Harry and Frankie did really, really well. Yeah. But, um, but like most of us just kind of, we didn't get too lucky when it came to the business side, but, but I got things in the works and then I took, I took this time to really just, you know, focus on like the music and stuff like that. Which I want to talk about. So I have a segment on this podcast called "What Does That Lyric Mean?" Yes, yeah, I listened to one here. <laughs> I only have one. I I should have pulled a few more. But uh, from your song "Body," yeah, yeah, you say, "But when you're laying in his bed at the end of the day, just remember what I did to your body." Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did What did you do to her body? So I did. <laughs> She's dead now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you murdered her. Cecil murdered. Hotel. That, murdered. Yeah. Murdered. <laughs> no, it was just. It was just. That's just more of like a. Um, that's more of like a. Uh, a play on I guess not really play on it's a pretty literal interpretation of like you know those girls My that song is kind of like that that infl that girl who gets flown around in private jets and just mm. goes and they're living the life but like who's paying for you like what are you really doing back how there? are you getting, how are you getting yeah, that yeah. money you know now not everybody <laughs> but how are you getting that stuff sure and these girls who want that good good life but they're not gonna get that good good sex if they get the good good life you mm. know what I mean? so that's what it's about it's like what do you want do you want the good, good life or the good, good sex? Because maybe the good, good sex could lead to the good, good life. You never know. That's don't interesting. Give, don't give up too soon. I didn't. I didn't interpret it that way. The way the way that I when I listen to the song because it's very uh, almost emotional. Yeah, in it, a way. it is. Yeah, that's the sexual interpretation of the song. For gotcha, sure. gotcha. So the way I saw it was like, guy stole your girl, and you're angry at her, mm -hmm. and you're like, shit, like we're not going to have as good sex with him as like what I, you know what we did that's his, essentially yeah that's that's okay. that's what it is that's what it is and of course this guy though is like a baller <laughs> right, right 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 but he's, he's not I, I but he's you. not me you know so like that. Wh wh how music like did you did you grow up playing music or did you fall into it yeah the, my dad and my dad's dad grandpa passed away when i was like 10 or so yeah he they both are very musically inclined played all the instruments and um play by ear and they read music too, but they have a just a, a perfect pitch, so they could play whatever. And I didn't know I had any musical talent until like <laughs> I was a senior in high school, and like apologize was really big, you know, like one Re exactly, yeah, of course, the One Republic song. And I'm like, listen, I just want to play this song and like sing to girls. I bet you girls will like that. You yes. know what I mean? So I so I learned that song. I'm like, it wasn't too bad, and I ended up learning lots of songs and, and singing a bit. And I eventually just learned how, and I still don't know how to read music, so I just play music by ear, like my yeah. parents or like my my dad and, and his dad. Yeah. So I have that, and then uh, never really wrote any music. I wrote a couple songs like when I was really depressed, like right before I got into out to handle. Sure. Of course, another thing when they're like, "Hey, play your song, Bryce. It has to be original music." Mm. I'm like, "It's a fucking depressing song, man." So that was the one that you played. That on was the one show. of one of them. Now that's not a release song because that song's actually trash, in my opinion, <laughs> compared to the songs I've re re released since. Yeah. But it's like a, when it's your first song you've ever written, it's probably garbage. And I only had like two songs, so I'm like, "All right, I'll play it." It's really fucking sad. It's not a party music. So as long as I could like play other songs afterwards, like yeah, for sure. Sure. But of course, they use like the one. Yeah, the one. Of course. I'm like, All right, whatever. So. Um, <laughs> So yeah, but I decided during quarantine that I wanted to really focus on making some music and staying creative because I wanted to make movies, but movies kind of didn't happen last year, right? Of course. Yeah, so cool. I'm like, all right, that's a bummer. I missed that. I missed that boat. And so I'm like, all right, let's uh, 
let's make music. So I invested a lot in, in like this, this mic, this Set SM7B and, and I got my interface and I had put my piano on my bed in like in my room and on my boat with my like, you know, logic. Yeah, and yeah. I literally just taught myself how to produce beats and mix vocals and mix audio and master. Wow. And I just, I really, I released one song a month this year. It's amazing. Yeah. Do you know Russ? Yeah, he had a I, similar. I actually come up. was watching a lot of Russ stuff and getting in that in that zone. Yeah, yeah. He's very big now, but he Huge. he was saying he would just keep pumping out music. It was like a song a day, it was like a song a, a week. Yeah, he was for three he years. really pumped out songs. Yeah, and he's Crazy. a superstar now. But yeah, of course. I don't, and I and this was so an experimental phase where it's like, are people gonna like my music? You know, what kind of music am? What kind of artist am I? Am I a pop artist? Am I R and B artist? Like, what am I? So I, I release a, a variety of different music. They're all pretty much the same. Nah, sure. One body's a little more sensual. The other one's a little more poppy. But um, it seems like it's getting good feedback, though. It's giving me more like, you know what, I could do this, but eventually I'm going to collaborate with like some real artists that are going to like make my shit fire. <laughs> Who, so. Who's like your dream collaboration? Fuck. I feel like you're going to say Beyonce. I was, low key, I was going to say The Weeknd because I weekend. think that would be sick. I could see that, bro, because like, your music is very like chill, romantic. Chill, exactly, exactly. I'm like, dude, if I get The Weeknd on a song, you know, that would just be insanity. But, be crazy. but yeah, Halsey, you know, something Halsey. like that too. She's stunning. She's the best. She's the best. I think she's bald, right? She is, and she's going to have a baby soon. Is or she, she really? might have just had a baby. I forgot. But she, she easy? No. Uh, she has had a boyfriend in a little bit. I think she's pretty under wraps right now, I believe. She's gorgeous, bro. Yeah, she is. Wow. Okay, so you, that's crazy, man. So what, Um. well, before I get into that, um, you mentioned your father a few times. Yeah. You seem to have, like, a crazy relationship, like, a great relationship with him. Definitely. Is he? Has he had, like, a big impact on you? Big time. Absolute hero. Absolute it's hero. It's amazing. Yeah. And so, like, in the, in the times where he's in, he's done everything. Entrepreneur forever. Got it. But he, primarily, in my whole life, at least, he's been in construction as a contractor. So he's in, 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 in my later life, he'd been, like, flipping houses and whatnot. So he's always yeah. brought me along to be his, like, assistant. Not necessarily assistant because I'm doing hard labor with a guy. <laughs> but, like, while he's wiring something, I'm fucking, I'm doing something else. Yeah, I'm yeah. laying floor, or like, demoing a kitchen or something like that. So That's cool. We are we we actually flip, like, three or four houses together. We do everything together. Go to the Chargers. I'm a big Chargers fan. Big ch yeah. Go to Chargers games, Dodgers games, Lakers games, all that stuff. Of course, my they, they, they live right next door. My mom and dad live right next oh, door. Oh, they're here. Boat. Yeah, oh, and Marina Del Rey. Shit. Actually, just got a really sick place that I'm going to spend a ton of time in because their new, their complex is insane. But yeah, yeah. I see them both all the time. My dad's always been the guy who's like, if there's a piano at a party, mm -hmm. he's playing it and everyone's gathering around. And I always watch that my whole life. And I'm like, I want to do that one day. I want to yeah. go into a party with a grand piano, sit at it, and have everyone just be like, oh, my God. Just watch. Yeah. And so I've, I've done that. That's crazy. <laughs> so I'm like, I, every time I think of my dad, so now but now my dad, but I'll do it. Even though I'm in a party with my dad, my dad will come in and he'll like, all right, my turn. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm like, all right, all right. That's so, crazy. But yeah, re really great relationship with both my parents. They've been very, very supportive. supportive and when you're yeah. like, when the route that I chose was was like art. Unconventional. You know what I mean? It's very yeah, unconventional. Yeah. You know, we got the movies. And I put my dad in my movie, Counterfeiters. He plays the cop in really? it, actually. Yeah. I'm watching that shit. Yeah, it's good, man. It's good. Um, and they're just, they were just very supportive. And luckily, and luckily I've been relatively critically successful in everything I've done. I mean, sure. I, haven't, I haven't gone super rich yet. Sure. But um, that's coming. Of course. Um, but keep flipping houses. Keep flipping houses and there. getting that crypto early. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a crypto. Not crypto. Oh, crypto. Oh, crypto. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, they're both very supportive, and I owe lots to them. Yeah. So when I do give Dirty Rich, I'm going to give them a ton back. Of course. So I'm Buy him a house. Yeah, shit. for sure, for sure. I'm on the beach. My dad wants a yacht with a helicopter. Hell so yeah. I'm like, all right, sweet. Hell yeah. So that's that's uh, that's the that's the relationship, man. But, yeah, v always very supportive and Really, my mom's like trying to be a momager now. Like, bro, I should do oh, this really? and that. I'm like, mommy, you don't know what you're talking about. I can't just DM <laughs> Demi Lovato and hang out with her mom. Like, that's not how it works. I'm like, all right. Oh, I mean, you can cold text someone to get them on your podcast. That's true. Maybe <laughs> here, maybe I'll get that. What's get Demi Lovato's number for me? I'll kidding. find. <laughs> I'll find a way. I will find a way, dude. That's amazing. I feel like because I have a great. I'm the same way. I have a great relationship yeah. with my parents. Not necessarily like very similar. Like, I don't. You know, I flip houses. My dad's very like. He's a doctor. Right? Yeah, it's yes, very right. different. Okay, but like you're, I feel like you're very lucky in that. In I that am. Sense, man. Yeah, you awesome. as well. Yeah, it's like it's. I've been fortunate. The whole group of the, like childhood friends, they all pretty much have like 
same not well some of them you know everyone gets divorced later in life shit but like <laughs> yeah. when i grew up we're, they all are like you know their families were still together and we had that like that family thing and it was just kind of it was nice to see so yeah. i know when i get married for like the second or third time whatever it is i want it to be for <laughs> <Secondary>. <laughs> no i do if it if the day in time comes i don't know when it will be but i do want to eventually have get married and have kids and whatnot because i see how it could it could happen. Could maybe be be nice, but isn't it like seventy percent of people who get married get divorced or something? Yeah, it's got to be more. Yeah, that's Higher. that's that that makes sense for sure. Doesn't seem like a good incentivizing. No, stat. It sounds like a sounds like a, a money pit. A nightmare. It does sound like a nightmare. Yeah, always get a prenup. That's what my dad says. Yeah, that's a good call. I was always figured if I want to get married, I could always just go to like South Carolina, and just find like <laughs> this beautiful little like wholesome girl. Yeah. <laughs> you, you dated uh, Nicole. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that, are you guys still friends? Are you guys still totally. trying it up? That's totally, cool. totally. Awesome. I'm still friends with pretty much all my exes except for that one. <laughs> How do you do that? Do you when you break up? Do you immediately become friends, or do you take some? Because I just went through a six. It was a six year relationship. We yeah. broke up. Oh wow! Did you? Yeah, horrible. Did yeah. you immediately become friends, or did you separate and then come back? Like, <sighs> well, circumstances in my longest terms relationships have always kind of been like, um, they either like there was some sort of intervention, like that some like they had to move or this and that or like it was just distance it was always like a distance thing so we've always kind of been like oh, i guess it ain't gonna work so like i guess we just kind of gotta separate <laughs> you know yeah. and my more recent relationships have been very nice but i haven't been able to commit fully because i have other things going on right so i you know i have to kind of remain a free agent and i'm you know i i do enjoy the company of like a specific person but like it's it's tough when you when you're up Ex, you know external you know factors where you're totally. like you have to kind of be a single guy right now so it's right like, okay. you're in your back like you're right. you're working right. it's hard it's good to be selfish exactly right? you gotta, at this point it, i have to be selfish exactly right it just is that time but in, in nicole's case it was covid i mean she, she was planning on coming out to la and this and that she was and in she, ireland or she's something, in, right? yeah lived in yeah she originally from ireland lived in the uk okay yeah. so it was just like yeah that's a bummer it's like it's just i'm not gonna see you yeah and we don't know when and on, I think UK still can't even travel to the US. Still, yeah. And like that's craziness. So I'm vax though. I could go to Me the US. Too, yeah. <laughs> Pfizer? <laughs> no, I got JJ. Oh, that's, uh, but I didn't get sick though. I didn't get like sick. You're not growing bumps. No, no, body. no. I'm sweet. No, they gave me the shot of the real stuff, but I already had it. Was it two uh, two doses? One one dose. One dose. Oh. Usually kills people, not literally, but like <laughs> their deathbed. But, but you were good? Totally good. Totally wow. good. Strong. Yeah, good genes. Strong man, man yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, both my parents also vaxxed, and one Pfizer, one Moderna, they also untouched. They're just good. Yeah, good genes. That's amazing, bro. Yeah. I love it. Too Hot to Handle Season 2 yeah. is coming out. June 23rd. Are you going to be involved in that in any way? I'll be, you know, follow me on social media. I'll be commenting on it. I'm okay. thinking about doing a little podcast or a little, like, YouTube commentary. or a little commentary on it because I think it's going to be hilarious. I know that <laughs> I, I know what they're going through, sure. so I can give you some insight. So I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to see who they are. You know what I mean. Yeah. If any really cute girls, I'll slide in their DMs. See what they're up to. <laughs> but it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to top season one, bro. Like especially I agree. season one of a new show. It's like. Do you know what the big thing about that is that everyone and they're gonna do it over two weeks in June 23rd and June 30th. They're gonna do it. They're gonna separate okay. in two weeks, so we only had an ours release at Warren's. Yeah. I think there's might be ten episodes. I think I heard that. Yeah. So, it's gonna be interesting because. They're going to be like halfway through the first or a couple episodes into the season two. They're going to be like, shit, let's watch season one. <laughs> so I think that we're going to get that whole everyone's watching season one again, right. kind of reload, which would be nice. It'd be nice to interact with the fans that have either forgotten or like I'm buried in their fucking feed. And they're like, oh, yeah, sure. Bryce, I still follow him or whatever. What's he <laughs> up to these days? You know? Yeah. So um, so I'm excited to reengage with the fans and yeah. uh, and comment on season two people. And I know they filmed season two and three back to back, so I don't know when three is even coming wow. out. If it's gonna be later this year than in, in another year. And I got some other stuff coming out that I can't really talk about, but I will be back. TV related. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'll be back on the television in a bit. Let's go, yeah. baby. So. That's exciting, man. So you got new show coming out. You obviously can't touch on it. Yeah. Uh, more music. I'm more assuming. More music. Yeah, man. I'm always, always grinding. Always working music. And is it at, is it Brick Bryce? It's going. It's called, pronounced Bryce. Bryce. Okay. I decided on the four letter because you know you look at the the Lauv and the Laney and like that's kind of like the the four letter vibe. It looks cool. It's fire. Good on, yeah. Good on merch. And one I day agree. I'll release the merch. <laughs> <laughs> I have a guy. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got yeah. you. Sweet, sweet. That's amazing, man. So anything else that you're excited for in the future? I mean, uh, anything? I'm excited to COVID end, I'll tell you that. Yes, bro. Nice. 
funny. Oh, wow. I'm coming to your boat. We're doing yeah. a massive oh, fucking Oh, bro, party. we're going to rage it. It's gonna I was be- watching my friend Garrett um, Morofsky. I don't know if you know him. He was with uh, Harry in Tulum just mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. Harry had like seven birthday celebrations. I know. I saw that. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I need that shit for my birthday. I know, like, bro. I had, I had a nice little weekend. Um, we have the same birthday, Harry and I. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we okay. found that out on, the, out on the show. We're just like, May May what? 24th? Like, fuck off. What are you, Pisces? Uh, Gem. Gemini. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's like the characteristics of a Gemini? The the common with the misconception. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the misconception is the two faced, the blah blah blah, mm, the mo- dual dual personality thing. But <laughs> um, but the real you know just to end it, just the real real quick story about Gemini, very fast. Yeah, yeah. Greek mythology: Zeus gives gives uh, disguises himself as a swan, goes to Earth, and impregnates a mortal woman. The mortal woman gives birth to three kids: Helen, who becomes Helen of Troy, Helen of Sparta, causes the Trojan War. Yeah. And then two twin boys, Castor and Pollux. One was immortal and one was mortal. Pollux was immortal. One day, Castor dies and it broke Pollux's heart. He goes to Zeus in Mount Olympus and says, "Can I be reunited with my brother?" Zeus says, "Sure." So he makes a constellation in the sky, and that's Gemini. So it's really about love and loyalty and family. That's what Gemini is. Okay, okay. So you're you're not a backstabbing piece of shit. No, 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 no. The love, loyalty, family part. <laughs> that's fire. I need. To, I'm a Leo, so I got like this big ass. Yeah, yeah. Cool, tattoo. cool, cool, cool. I don't know. Sh- all I know is we're charming, supposedly. Yeah, there it is. Narcissistic. Okay. And um, e- ego. To say, a lot of my exes were, were Leos. Fiery. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fiery, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm Dude. believing that shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to get the tattoo. Exactly. Like, Fuck it. You're like, I'm a fucking lion. Let's go. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. Look, I, I think we got to wrap. I know you got shit cool. to do, but thank you so much for coming yeah, on. Bro, thanks for having me. Where bro. can people find you? Yeah, at Bryce Hirschberg on pretty much everything. <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in to the podcast. It's your boy, Divij. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys go follow Bryce. Check out his music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, go listen to Body. Great song, man. Appreciate that. I really fuck it's with good, it. Yeah. Good bedroom music. Yes. You can have sex to that song. You can. That's a wrap. Sweet. Peace. <laughs> Peace. Peace.